Do you believe in time travel? Albert Einstein once said, it is highly probable that time travel has already happened at some point in the future. I'd like to tell you a story today that will likely sway your opinion if you're at all skeptical on the matter. In 2004, a man named John Parker lived in the northern part of Kentucky. John was a single, 29-year-old bachelor and had many friends in his local community. One of John's favorite hobbies was fishing. He would always take road trips and find the most unique lakes to go paddle out into with his canoe. One day, John was on vacation in the Bahamas when he came across a huge lake called Lake Rosa. He didn't have his canoe with him, but he saw that they were renting speedboats and jet skis at the lake. John parked his car and walked down to the rental store. Inside, he met a lady who assured him he could rent a boat and fishing gear. He rented a boat and some equipment and prepared to go out onto the lake. Upon leaving, the lady at the counter, a young, 20-year-old girl who said her name was Mary Wells, jokingly told John to make sure he was safe out there. You are in the triangle, after all, she said. John didn't know what this meant. The triangle, he asked. Yes, the Bermuda Triangle. We are right on its border. Mysterious things happen out in that water and up in these skies, but I'm sure you'll be fine. Then she looked right at him and laughed in a way that John felt was strange, but he thought nothing of it. John thanked Mary Wells and went on his way to fish in the lake. At first, the lake was beautiful, and although John hadn't caught any fish yet, he was soaking in the sun and having a blast in the lake. But soon, clouds began to cover the lake small ones at first, but then they started to get darker and larger. It was as if they came out of nowhere. John used his speedboat to try to get out of the foggy area, but he got disoriented and the clouds seemed to go on forever. Then it started to rain. There was lightning and thunder, and John could feel this unusual electrical current and static all around him. The storm went on for over half an hour, and finally John began to get nervous. He decided he'd call for help. He called the rental store, but there was no answer. Then he tried to dial 911 and got no answer either. He tried a few more times to call his friends and family, but no one would pick up. John didn't know what to do. Finally, John saw what he thought was the light of day through a small part in the clouds up ahead. He drove his boat towards it, and it got closer and closer. Eventually, John came to the part in the clouds and he drove his boat through it. When John came through the clouds, it was a bright and sunny day again, but something else was off now. The lake looked nothing like it did when he entered it. He drove towards the nearest dock where he saw a different rental store. As he drove to it, he could see the number on it, so he tried calling. A lady answered the phone and he explained that he was lost. He wanted to know where the west entrance to Lake Rosa was so he could return his boat and fishing equipment and get back to his vehicle. He said that he had to get back to watch the 2004 Summer Olympics. The lady on the phone said, you must be joking, right? When he asked why, she said, first of all, I don't know where Lake Rosa is, but you're in Lake Michigan in Chicago. And second, the 2004 Olympics was 15 years ago since the year is 2019. That can't be right, John explained. I have to be in Lake Rosa. I am in the Bahamas, aren't I? It's 2004. Why don't you bring the boat on in and we'll talk about it when you get here, she said. But as John hung up and punched the speedboat to try to get there as quick as possible, he started to see the same clouds as before appear slowly. Little by little, he was consumed by them again. And then came the rain thunder and lightning. John was stuck in the same storm that caught him the first time and he could now see nothing but the dark clouds. He recorded everything that happened in his notes on his phone that was later found, but nothing else was recorded after this point. John disappeared in 2004 along with the boat he rented from the rental store in Lake Rosa in the Bahamas. The lady at the rental store in Chicago claims to have seen John in his boat that day in 2019. She reportedly told investigators she looked out the window when he started not making sense and claiming that he was from a different time 
and saw his boat heading towards them. Then she saw large dark clouds consume the boat, and a thunderstorm ensued for about an hour. Other witnesses from that day who were on the lake later told investigators that it was a bright and sunny day, and they never saw any dark clouds or rain of any kind. According to her, though, when the storm cleared up, there was no sign of the boat or John. It was like he just disappeared, said the lady at the Chicago rental store. Then she looked right at the investigators and laughed, almost as if she knew something that they didn't. He then turned back for a quick second and asked, By the way, can I please get your name and age, miss, for the record? Of course, she replied. My name is Mary Wells, and I am 20 years old. The investigator, having no idea of the significance of her claim, thanked her and was on his way. When the original investigators who investigated John's disappearance in the Bahamas in 2004 heard about this interview in Chicago, they were stunned. John Parker had mentioned this 20-year-old girl named Mary Wells, who he rented the original boat from in Lake Rosa in the Bahamas in 2004, and the eerie exchange of words that he had had with her. They went straight to the rental store in Chicago to speak with Mary Wells, but when they got there, they met an old man named Sean, who claimed to be the owner of the rental store. He said he and his nephew are the only ones that work at the store, and that they never spoke to any investigators or had any knowledge of the incident with John ever happening. This urban myth leaves so many questions unanswered by those who know of it. Who was this Mary Wells that investigators spoke to, and was this the same person in the original rental store? Whatever happened to John Parker, will he show up again somewhere in another random lake? How could he have traveled halfway across the United States in under an hour, and how could he have possibly ended up in another lake? Leave your theories in the comments below, and go ahead and subscribe for more stories of America's strangest myths. Thank you for listening, and I hope you enjoyed this weird and possibly true short story about John Parker, the mysterious Mary Wells, and the infamous Bermuda Triangle. See you in the next one.